I've only seen this dish as part of Ristoffel, which is a Dutch presentation of Malaysian food. If you don't know the history, that probably seems weird to you, but for nearly 200 years, the Netherlands controlled a large part of Malaysia. Just as the British imported their version of Indian cuisine after a long period of controlling India, the Dutch also have their version of Malaysian cuisine. Ristoffel literally translates as rice table. Read the annotations at the start of the video here for more about this. I have a uh, piece of lamb here that's sectioned from a uh, boneless, le I mean a bone-in leg of lamb. Uh, the butchers just cut it straight across here. You can use other pieces of lamb. This one uh, is going to be fairly tough, so <laughs> it's hard to reach around the camera. So what I'm going to do is use the jacquard device on it to, to tenderize it some, to begin with. Yeah, these end pieces aren't going to be useful for anything but stock. And then I got to take a, a sharp knife here, and I'm going to trim off this this uh, little bit of fat here, a little bit, quite a lot of fat along here, and then I'm going to cube up the rest of the meat. And this is what you're going to end up with. You got somewhere around 250 grams of uh, nicely cubed. Uh, meat that has no heavy uh, fat on it and it has no stringy bits of tendons or anything else. Very nice and tender. It's been ran through the, the uh, jacquard device. It's ready to go. I have the ingredients that are going to be pureed together into the marinade laid out. Uh, I'm using macadamia nut oil for this. You can use regular oil or even peanut oil. Uh, macadamia is, is, is a nice touch to this, but you know it's, it's expensive and you don't have to. Um, for the spices, I've got brown sugar, teaspoon, uh, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, quarter of a teaspoon of white pepper ground, full teaspoon of turmeric ground, and uh, three quarters of a teaspoon dried mustard. We have 30 grams of shallot, three garlic cloves, which is about 15 grams. I've got a really large red serrano chili here. Usually they're smaller than this. You can use two. You can uh, split and uh, scrape the seeds and the membranes out if you don't want so hot. Uh, I actually like it hot. It's supposed to have some bite to it, so I'm going to use this, this whole one. I've got 80 grams of mango here that I have cut the skin off of carefully. This is just the pulp and this is unripe mango. It's, it's partly ripe. This is still quite firm and rather green tasting and that's part of the secret to this dish. And, uh, and then finally about a tablespoon of uh, ginger that's been grated. And all of this is going to get loaded into the uh, stick blender cup and pureed. And of course I cut up the, uh, the larger pieces into smaller ones to help out the stick blender. <laughs> And then you end up with a puree like this. Now, don't want to add all of it to the lamb because we need it to make the sauce. We're only going to add, you know, somewhere around 50 grams of this goes into the lamb. The rest of this we're going to use for making the sauce. What goes into the lamb is not going to be recoverable. We're going to, we're going to have to dry this off the lamb later. But uh, this is enough. You want it to be coated well like this, but it doesn't need to be. Uh, soaking in the sauce. It's, it's plenty. As long as the, each piece of lamb is touching the marinade, it's just fine. Now as for making the sauce, you, you can go ahead and do that now with this or you can uh, you can put it off a little while while the lamb marinates. It's, it's up to you. You've got a, a point of where you can break here. You can just refrigerate this. And this can sit overnight in the refrigerator if you want, but at the very minimum it needs to sit for two hours at room temperature. Yeah, I've got the ingredients uh, assembled for the coating or sauce for this lamb. Uh, this is the uh, part of the uh, puree that was not used for the marinade, of course. Uh, the apple cider vinegar. Uh, this is Nam Pla fish sauce actually from Thailand. I've got uh, a, some mint here which I'm going to uh, pick the leaves off of and cut into chiffonade. Uh, about, we're going to need about two, three tablespoons of mint and a little black pepper. And uh, now we begin heating a uh, non-stick skillet on a medium-high heat. Now this mixture already has um, 
some oil in it, so we don't really need to add new oil to the pan. And it's hot, but it's not raging hot yet. When I added this, it's about 250 Fahrenheit. Uh, just over the boiling point of water. But it's not really not too critical. Okay, we're going to put it in, let it come up to heat, start sizzling here. And just like this, we're going to, I'm going to actually turn the heat down from 7 to 6 now, just to keep it going at a slow pace here. We need to cook all these ingredients, but we certainly don't want to burn anything. We don't want to singe anything because that will make it bitter. After about five minutes, you can see it's quite a bit thicker. Most of the liquid's been reduced and it's a bit darker. So this is a good time to add vinegar. We're going to cook this just a little bit to make it homogenous first before we add anything else. And stir it around, keep it on the same heat, bring it to a simmer. It's been about one and a half minutes since I added the vinegar. There's the uh, chiffonade of mint. And the black pepper. And the nam claw, the fish sauce. Let me just estimate it, you know, it doesn't have to be exact. About one and a half teaspoons. Now I'm going to reduce the heat down from six down to about three, very low. And we want to simmer it like this for uh, a few minutes. Here we have it about four, four and a half minutes later. Uh, again, remember the heat was on low. This is fine. Now you see why I, I uh, couldn't really call this a sauce, because it's thicker than that. This is going to become a coating for the, the, the fried lamb, um, as you'll see in just a minute. So this is done. We can transfer this off to a bowl. So here's the uh, <laughs> goop <laughs> sauce coating. Uh, I'm put that off to the side. This is the lamb that was marinated overnight. I'm putting it down on some paper towel that's on a plate. We want to get off any of the extra marinade. And we also want to get this up to room temperature. So I'm going to put it on the paper towel. I'm going to dab it a little bit with another paper towel. A second here. So, and then um, we're going to let this sit for a little bit, maybe 10 or 15 minutes before we begin heating the oil. I'm using half a liter of oil here, uh, which is going to be enough for half of the lamb at a time, so we have to work in two batches. When the oil comes up to temperature, which is about uh, 300, a little bit over 300, about 155 Celsius, something like that. can add half the lamb at one time. begin counting the time. Doesn't really need stirring. Just make sure that the lamb pieces aren't stuck together, that's all. And after about two and a half minutes, you drain the lamb off with a slotted spoon like this and add it directly to this um, to this coating mixture. You're not going to drain it. The, the oil that clings to the lamb is part of the dish going to be drained later again anyway, so that's okay. So, once you got all the pieces of lamb out, watch the temperature, make sure it comes back up to temperature before you add the other half of the lamb pieces. I've just taken the uh, second batch of the uh, lamb out of the fat and added it. Now I'm adding the cilantro. Minced cilantro stir this together a little bit and then I'm going to put it on toothpicks and plate it up. But it's all done at this point. I'm very pleased to announce the release of Volume 3, the focus on food chemistry.
I want to clear up a few things about these three volumes. First, they all contain completely different information. There's no duplication. They're not revisions. When I wrote Volume 1, I had two and a half years of YouTube videos to cover. People had been asking me for the printed list of ingredients for all of those dishes, and so I obliged. There are recipes with stepwise directions and many tips offered throughout, as well as an extensive history of Russian cuisine over the last thousand years, but Volume 1 is very different from Volume 2 and 3. In Volumes 2 and 3, I only had about nine months of YouTube recipes to cover in each, so I was able to provide stepwise directions for everything. In Volume 2, I included a lot of additional information about cooking and some simple examples of flavor chemistry to set the stage for Volume 3. While Volume 2 hopefully got you thinking about some of the processes that go on in cooking and how flavors are expressed and sensed at the molecular level, the topic was painted with pretty broad strokes to make it easy to digest. Pun intended. Volume 3 is a milestone of the series in which I have included an entire introductory course in food chemistry, which is why Volume 3 is about 70 pages longer than Volume 2. If you just want the recipes, that's okay too. You don't have to read the first few chapters. But if you've ever been curious about what influences tastes and flavors and the rationale for deciding cooking times and temperatures and why things taste different when they're combined in different ways, this book will answer many of those questions. It also paves the way for Volume 4, which will be next year. If you want to know more about my adventures as a chef around the world and have some great laughs along the way, be sure to check out the video tour of my book, 40 Years in One Night. It's up on YouTube right now. Click the link. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.